Hi everybody, um, I thought I'd do something a little different for a change and do a tutorial. So, uh, this tutorial is going to be how to fix damaged images, like this one. Um, I picked this one because it didn't look too bad, like manageable. Um, I'll probably have to like speed through some of it in order for you to not be bored by watching me do these little clicks. Uh, so the main tools that we're going to be using in this case is going to be the clone stamp tool and the healing brush tool. And although I have a Illustrator or a Photoshop CC, I think I'm going to use uh, CS3 because it's missing some of the features CC has that makes it uh, a bit easier uh, to use in CC. So I mean, you know, CC it's, it does the same thing. It's just easier because it gives you a better image. Uh, before you actually do it. So, uh, I'm probably going to start off with the healing brush tool. Let's get a nice size, because we're going with big swatches right now. Um, so if I just grab that, you can see how I just sort of... Now, there's a difference in whether you use a hard brush, so hardness, or a... Uh, so that's 100% hardness. Now, uh, we'll use that, but we also have the soft brush, which can um, have other advantages. Like you can see sort of how uh, when it does it, it kind of fades off. That would be a softer brush. So um, now this is something that you always have to be con thinking about is um, if I were to go like this and go like this or like that and then that again and then that again, what you end up with there is a repeating pattern. Um, hopefully you, you kind of want to avoid those where you can. Uh, otherwise, you can just sort of wash them off, wash them out. All right, let's get up close and personal. Uh, let's see the damage here. Uh, we got some damage on the face for both people, um, into the eyebrow and everything, some hair missing, um, and a lot of background damage. Uh, the background damage is easy enough, uh, as I was just showing you. But I think I'm going to go with a harder brush uh, right now, like that. Now, the advantage of a harder brush or a softer brush uh, has to do with how tight you have to get. Like, for instance, if I had to, oh, excuse me, if I had to take care of this piece right here to fix his skin where it breaks right here, and it also looks like it's a little faded compared to the original picture, um, I'd probably use a small hard brush. Or, well, in this case, uh, because I have a little piece right there to work with, Maybe I'll, I'll keep with a softer brush. I have to go a little smaller than that in diameter. There we are. All right, so we want to get this. We want to get this picture. Let me get this here. Roll it. Oh, get it out of here. What happened? All right, so let's put you back up here. All right, now I want to get in uh, real tight here. Now, the advantage of uh, CC versus uh, this one See how it just sort of blends together? Uh, you have to think about texturing um, because skins have texture, especially in an old photo like this. You want to keep it uh, kind of an old style photo, oldie, oldie picture show photo. And as you see, we're getting a little bit of weird coloration in there. So I'm probably going to mix that up, throw a little bit of that in there. All right, now we need the good contrast. Again, you can see where it's almost faded compared to the other part of the picture. Uh, so we want to kind of blend those colors a little better. So if you go with something in between, looks like he's got a little eye line here. We want to keep that a uh, wrinkle. Oh, that wasn't quite right. I didn't like that. Um, so I might have to go a little smaller for this. Uh, is that a scar or... I don't know, I can't tell. Looks like he has a matching one over here. So I think that's actually part of his thing, but it kind of comes off wrong uh, see and there's a there's a crow's foot right there so let's go with a slightly smaller brush we're getting into the details here now I could spend you know and, and bang out that background there we go but you don't want to use uh, your source like when I go like this which is by the way pressing the alt key when I go like this to collect my source you want to get your source from different places in order to break up the, the color. Otherwise, you end up with the, the repeated patterns I was telling you about. So we're going in here. Some of this looks like it's got uh, some wrinkles and other damage. 
let's just try and get rid of that. Maybe pull a little bit from down here in order to soften it. That looks a little better. Because I think it's actually a line on his face, so we don't want to lose actual physical characteristics uh, of your subject. And that looks like it kind of got distorted a little bit, so I'm kind of cleaning that up a little bit. And for the most part, you can just sort of click and drag. Uh, there are some weird things, like say I want to uh, get this hair, right? I want to I want to take care of this. Uh, you can get some uh, where it blends wrong, but then again, that has to do with uh, hardness or softness of your brush. See, if I go with a really hard brush, then I can do a really sharp angle. So we're going to go 100% hardness. And I can go right up to the edge like that, and it's not going to... Uh, if I were using a soft brush, it might pull color from the outside area, uh, which is not something we actually want. Let's do his hair a little bit. Do his hair. A lot of damage so far. It's already been repaired. Just, just that little bit. Now this looks a little funky. I don't like that. So we're going to go ahead and soften our brush. And I'm a little bit all over the place. Uh, there we go. But I do this a lot, so I hope I don't lose anybody with my. Uh, let's bring a little more bright color into there. Yeah, just a little bit more. That does kind of look like a tear, though, so I think uh, we're just going to make it disappear anyway. Yeah. Let's soften that area real quick. Got a little bit of damage here. Now here uh, is, is something of interest, the uh, chin areas and how to get the sharpness of a, of a chin because generally you want to pull a sample. Like say I wanted to pull, uh, I want to fix this right here, right? So I want to sample a uh, hair that's going basically in the same direction, but this one kind of goes down like this. Oop. So uh, that could be tricky. But I can go, what I can do. No, that's a, that wasn't good. Let's go with a harder brush. That's not, I, th I think in this case we're going to have to use the clone tool. Um, so the clone tool does kind of the same thing, but it's a little cruder. Uh, and normally requires a little cleanup afterwards. But with a clone tool you can get a nice sharp edge like this. Oops. With a clone tool you can get a nice sharp edge. Now, with the clone tool, you definitely get a lot of these repeated pattern issues, but we can, uh, I'll show you how to deal with that a little bit later. You can see I'm just kind of pulling a piece from nearby. You got to be careful with it, because the clone tool will definitely give you the uh, repeated pattern issue. If I keep hitting from the same place, uh, you can also get some distortions, like that looks like a little bit of a distortion, so... I'm just going to go like that. There's also this tool if you just want to do a large patch. Like say I want to... Ooh, come on, come on. Alright, am I all the way over? I already did most of that. So let's just say I want to use the large patch. Uh, the spot healing tool. Um, you can use that, at, but this is what happens unfortunately with the spot healing tool. If it doesn't have a good s things near it in order to get the pattern. But over here it works pretty good. Okay, so, but back here, there's just too many conflicting colors. So the only time you really want to use, uh, so it'll end up with a mush, kind of, or it'll do a weird repeaty pattern thing. Yeah, it can get really strange. Uh, so you kind of got to be careful with this one. Um, if you were doing something like maybe a leather or something with a pattern, probably would work with his hair, for instance. Uh, let's see how it does on his hair. This, we'll use it on this section right here. <clears throat> because it's looking for recognizable patterns within a region. Uh, and I currently have it with a soft brush. So all the way, uh, hardness all the way down. So it's looking for the repeated pattern nearby. But obviously it's picking up these patterns, which are, are not what we want. So generally speaking, the base one, uh, I don't really use... Uh, very often. It, it, it rarely seems to work the way you really want it to. Whereas this one, you can kind of, you know, you just kind of 
grab pieces. Now we're dealing with, oh, there's a pattern problem. See, how, see what it's doing there? Yeah, now it looks all funny because it's pulling from a weird place. So we want to go in a different direction. We're going to take it from this side. That's a little better. If I can pull some from up here, maybe. I'll give it a more natural flow. Yeah. See, I need to get the flow of his hair, too. Uh, so you can just kind of brush it in, as you can see I'm doing here. And then it sort of keeps the the look of the hair without... Um, see, same here. I might want to use that. But you got to make sure that your source uh, aspect, like, is... See how it's a darker gray here? It's also a darker gray here. And then um, when I go this way, as I'm pulling it, it's going to move the pointer into his darker hair. So uh, you kind of want to get, like, about there. And you see it's going to start pulling from the darker hair which will maintain that uh, what we want there, but then we had that issue, so let's just get rid of that. Got a little scalp showing here, so let me just kind of pull some of that scalp into there. There we go. <clears throat> yeah, there's a lot of wrinkles in his hair, so that's definitely an issue, but as you can already see, it's really not taking that much uh, to get it where I want to get it. Oh, see. Now there's an issue you can run into. Um, if you pull your source from here, and then you go to go like this, you're going to hit the same source as right here. Because when it pulls, it's going to go like that. Right, so we want to go back a little bit. So we don't have that kind of, oh, that was too dark. Let me just go back just a notch. Go back a little bit. There we go. That looks a little better. Now, I don't have a lot of good hair samples in this part of his head. Uh, but I do have similar colors in other part of his head. So we're just going to do some repair work over here real quick. Little touch-ups. Well, got a little patterning going on there, so we got to break that out. Again, patterning. One, two, three. Same pattern. So you kind of got to pull, pull from different sources in order to break up that patterning. Um, it is definitely, a, 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 it takes a little practice, I think. So I want to pull my darker hair from here and see how it's going to blend. See, now the angle is wrong, which is part of the part of an issue, because this one is going up. This one should be going down. So I'm going to have to pull the hair from someplace else. Uh, maybe from the edges here, I might have enough to work with. Let me see. That's not too bad. It's kind of them now. I'm now I gotta fake it a little bit. Gotta fake it. Oh, that was a little too much. But say if I want to pull from here, it's going at roughly the same angle. So I just kind of go. That didn't work so good. Up a little higher. Up a little higher. Up oh, patterning. Another thing you could do is if I had a pattern over here. That I could use, uh, I could copy that and pull it over, but I don't really. So we're just gonna have to fake this. Yep, gonna have to fake it. And I might want to use the clone tool because it's such a wide piece. Um, in this case, it, it makes more sense to use the clone tool because the clone tool is gonna exactly copy whatever it is. So, and it's not gonna do any blending uh, like the other one will. So we got a little bit of an issue there. But again, an advantage of the clone tool is you can get these little sharp angles that are really hard to do with any other tool. And I'm going to have to pull some of this in here. But now it's starting to get a little deformed, so i got to pull my, from different sources. Anyhow, I'm uh, kind of pulling from different sources to repair the damage. And in this case, because it is so... Uh, delicate. <laughs> I'm going to use a uh, this tool instead. <clears throat> you got to worry about that patterning. Oh, that went too dark. That went too light. So let's go with a slightly closer and smaller brush. There we go. Now we got a little bit of a darker part right here in the uh, with his forehead. So I want to try and keep that in shape. Get rid of that patterning. There we go. 
And some of this could be folds from the uh, from the actual rips in the paper. So you kind of have to keep that in mind. Um, oh, see, okay, here's a here's an instance where it's going to pull. It's going to pull from there. It's pulling from the eyebrow, and I don't want that. So I might want to use a much sharper. Oh, it is already the way, all the way sharped. But maybe a clone tool. Just kind of pull it from nearby. So I can kind of keep that. Uh, but see, then you get this issue with the with the clone tool is that it's too contrasty. Uh, one way to make that a little better. No, I want to go back to that. One way to make that a little better is to use a soft clone tool brush, and that will give it a more of a blend on the edges. So I'm key. I'm maintaining the the integrity of the line. But you have an issue where it can kind of get washed out, so we end up having to go back to this. And we still have the issue where it's pulling from here. Uh, ah! Alright, so we might want to use, in this case, we might actually want to use uh, the spot healing brush. What that's going to do, generally, it might want to go a little smaller. It's going to pull from both sides. But it's going to do so in a way that blends them better. See, but then you have the you can you can lose some some detail in there. Anyway, uh, I can fix that. Now, now it's uh, the inside of his eye here. This is going to be a little tricky. So I basically am trying to show you all the important uh, techniques in a smaller amount of space here. Let's see here, and then I'll probably just go through and finish it, and then uh, you'll see it in speed mode. Uh, but right now I'm sticking to technique, so I can show you kind of the different aspects here. All right, so I don't mind the white pulling or, or the uh, dark pulling in a little white because as long as it blends, that's what's important. Now I'm getting a little bit of patterning here, so I want to break that up with some other samples, and because they are of a similar tone, let's pull it from um, kind of a different place. And pull the same color from over here. Alright, let's make that go away. Okay, so yeah, you see slowly what I'm doing is pulling out colors. Let's bring this white up into here a little bit more, into the nose. There, that'll make that pop a little better. I've got enough of a sample here to do that. But it gets a little trickier in here, so I just kind of got to make it up as I go along. I might have to pull a little bit out with the uh, clone stamp. Uh, that looks pretty good. Um, now, of course, we got the patterning that comes with clone stamps, um, so you have to get rid of that. There we go. There we go. Okay. So now his hair looks almost normal. Imagine that. Getting there. It's almost there. All right, that's a funny one. Let's fix that. Oh, no, I don't want that one. It's pulling too much of the light out. Okay. Now we want to give it a little pattern, so I'm trying to find a little bit of a pattern that I can lay in here without too much repetition. Oh, I don't like that. That went too far. That went too far. Again, might want to go with the clone stamp in these tight areas. That's the only way to get a nice, clean pull. I think I'm going to sharpen it. And here I want to use the clone stamp. For sure. Uh, we want to keep some of this background in, uh, in perspective. And in this case, because the piece is so big, I mean, more using the clone stamp. Oh, see. Shit. Pulling from where it used to be. Let's 
go some of this. All right, now, uh, now I want to clean up this kind of coloring in here, like that. I want to pull some from down here where it looks like it's more intact. Uh, ah, see? Yeah, I definitely got to use the clone stamp in these tight areas, especially when you're dealing with big uh, swatches, big uh, swaths of area like this. So this could be a little tricky. Um, all right, here's an important technique. If you back away from the picture a little bit, you can see that there is a wall here. There's a wall. Look at his, his face already looks so much better. Um, I do see a little bit. You can kind of see like almost like a bad line here. So we just want to get in a little closer to that. Yeah, I see that. See this right here? All right, so that's not going to look natural. So I guess I'm going to finish working on his face for now. Um, it's, yeah, let's kind of break it up. Uh, give it a little bit of the kind of patterning I want. Uh, patterning I want. There we go. With the right tones and colors. Oop, a little patterning. Got to watch out for patterning. Uh, I want to bring some of that up into there to make it look a little more textured. Now I want to soften the edges a little. See how it's just kind of blending in a little better? Yeah, because now I'm pulling from uh, a similar area, but it's going to meld a little bit of the dark with the white. So what it's, that does is break it up, break it up into smaller pieces. Let's get down here. Now I wanna, I'm gonna finish fixing his head. Let's see how that's gonna work. Ah, oh, see now, this is where I gotta use the clone on these tight, these tight areas. Uh, where's the clone? Clone, clone. Obviously, I'm not going to be able to do this whole picture and still be entertaining because it's going to take a while. Um, but I will work on it, and, um, and we'll show you how that's going to be. All right, let's pull some of that out. Let's get rid of this. Uh, he's got, it looks like we have another uh, one of these uh, bad color shifts. You can see it goes from really, uh, really light to really dark. Uh, we don't want that. So I want to try and find a medium tone somewhere in this art. Maybe around here. Hey, that helped a lot. Let's go back to here. Medium tone. I'm going to pull some hair from over here. There we go. Uh, no, we don't want, we want to use a clone there. It is a process uh, doing this kind of work. Um, don't expect it to be anything else. <laughs> It is a slow uh, process, especially the more complex the damage, the harder it's going to be, the longer it's going to take. Um, I knew this was going to be a tough one. I knew I wasn't going to be able to show you all of the, the work that's involved, but I was going to be able to do quite a bit of it and give you an idea of the different techniques a person might use. I'm going to see if there's anything else. Oh, yeah, I want to get back to that pattern, too. Um... Let's just get, oh, 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 no, that wasn't good. Smaller, smaller, smaller chunks. Nope, damn. All right. Yeah, that can be an issue when you get into areas like that. Well, let's focus on, uh, let's say his chin here. I'm pulling from this color. And then I can pull, I, I, I'm going to have to make a smaller brush. So we're pulling the right here and sort of blending it. And of course the chin is going to be darker and he has a piece of collar here so let's just do that with the collar. And we want a dark color. I think I'm going to have to go uh, really, really low here. There we go. There we go. And I can, uh, I think I'm going to use my clone to make that line a little tighter. Let's, uh, let's do 50%. Don't do that. Whatever you're doing, just stop it. Okay. <laughs> Computer, don't misbehave. Okay. That's not quite dark enough, though. So, yeah. 
Make some of that in there. But as you can see, I'm tightening up my line down here so it looks a little more natural. It doesn't look bulgy. Because um, we want this collar in, intact. This is uh, definitely something to learn. Now, a way you can do this is kind of, you see how it's got a little kind of like a crosshair? Uh, you want to get that crosshair right in the center. And then you can kind of, if and then you can go like this. Again, hold it. But don't click the mouse because you get your sample by uh, alt and mouse click okay so you want to get that nice and centered look at that need to just go away oh we don't want to pull from there definitely need the clone stamp for that uh, so yeah this this kind of work is very much a process uh, but it can be a nice mother day mother's day gift maybe I was thinking about doing that for my mom uh, it's nice uh, you know, a nice, uh, nice gift for you repair some of Grandma's old pictures or something. I think I went too far with that one anyway. All right, now we got some colors in here I got to deal with. You want to pull from a similar color spectrum, similar pattern. I mean, it's repetitive for me to keep saying this, but it's true. You gotta, you know, you do this. He's got a little piece of his lip that's uh, kind of. There we go. Looks like a little minor damage. Oh, that was not right. I mean, normally you can avoid uh, getting too close to something, but it can be a little tricky, you know? All right, maybe I'll deal with her for a minute. We'll get back to him later. 